What is going on everyone, Tutorial Tim here and today we're going to be adding auto layout to these dialogues and we're going to go over a couple and then I'm going to challenge you to make some. So let's get started. Here I have a couple of elements that have been made that we'll need to use to compose these dialogues and we'll go ahead and start with this alert dialogue. All right, we have all the spacing references and the boundaries, the text box and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and just hit Option Command C on this and then create a new frame, set the width to 280 pixels and the height to 118 pixels. Then hit Option Command V. We've now copied those styling properties uh, based on that selection of the dialog. And then I'm going to go ahead and Command click on the text and and paste paste that in here. I'm going to go ahead and select my buttons and paste those as well. So we've got our buttons pasted. We'll go ahead and rearrange those elements and just sort of drag those down here. And we can go ahead and actually add auto layout to these elements. And they have the proper spacing between each item, which is great. And then I'm going to also go ahead and hit Shift A now, which will completely change the structure, which is okay, don't worry. We're going to go ahead and select our text, add auto layout to it. And this is the exact we're in a good spot right now and we're going to want to add padding of uh, 20 pixels on the top and 24 on the sides uh, to the auto layout wrapping the text here and we're going to go ahead and set 20, 24, 0 and 24 and then what I'm going to do is go ahead and readjust the width again set that to 280 pixels set that to 280 pixels and then the parent frame of the text here, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's set to fill container. And then I'm going to go ahead and modify the bounding box and make sure that the there's only 24 pixel padding on the right of this bounding box. And now that that's set to 24, that's great. I'm going to go ahead and check the text properties and ensure that the resizing is set to auto height, which it is. And then I'm going to select the parent frame, this dialog, and then set that to bottom right here, this, this alignment padding adjustment. And then we're going to want to add some padding below this button and to the right of it and set that to 8. So now we have achieved the, the proper spacing that we want for our, our, our typography or for our modal. So now we can go ahead and continue to type in messages and whatnot and we are good to go. So now that we have that variant built out, we can go ahead and copy the naming convention, paste it, make this the new main component, and you can remove the old one now. So with that said, we can proceed to moving on and creating the simple dialog variant. So I'm going to select it, Option Command C, create a new frame, the width set to 280 pixels and the height set to 240 pixels. I'm going to hit Option Command V. I'm going to copy this text, paste it, and then I'm going to go ahead and actually grab the, the list item variant that's needed. I'm going to drag that in there. I'm going to ensure that there's a spacing of about 20 pixels from the top here. I'm going to duplicate this and hit Command D to duplicate it again. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift A. And we almost have the desired effect. So all I'm going to do is click on my text, hit Shift A, wrap that in auto layout, set the properties to uh, 20 and 24. Uh, on the sides, so I'm going to go ahead and select 20. Well, actually, I can go ahead and specify 20 here, comma 24. And then I'm going to remove the, the spacing between items here and set that to zero. Whoops, I'm going to remove the padding on the top, set that to zero. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the, the frame of the header and make sure that's set to fill container. And then I'm going to go ahead and adjust the text bounding box to... Uh, Make sure that is set to 24 pixels without, there we go, without actually modifying the width of this dialog since we want it to be set to 280. And with that, we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and select my the dialog, the parent frame, auto frame, set the spacing between items to zero, and boom, we have created the desired effect. So I can, everything will adjust accordingly with auto allow implemented on everything. 
even if I modify the the height or make new lines in, in the dialog header. So that's good. We'll go ahead and rename that component, make it a main component, delete the old one in with the new. And we'll go ahead and create one more variation here. So I'm gonna hit Option Command C, create a new frame, set the width to 280 and the height to 300 pixels, Option Command V to paste those styling properties. I'm gonna go ahead and select all these elements, copy them and paste them in here. And with that said, I'm gonna hit Shift A on the parent frame. So that's gonna change everything up here. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is actually group our text here. Make sure the spacing between the text is set to 16 and not 19. And then since that's wrapped here, I'm gonna go ahead and select the parent element and set the padding to zero. And we're gonna go ahead and specify the padding on our own. So 20, 20, 20 on the top and 24 on the sides. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is select our parent frame again, and then set the alignment and padding adjustments to bottom right. And then we're gonna to want to group our buttons with auto layout, so hit Shift A again, and ensure that's set to bottom right, the alignment and padding adjustments there, and the spacing between the items should probably not be 19 pixels, but more so uh, 12. And then we want a padding of eight pixels on the right, and then just ensuring what what is the spacing between the the copy and the buttons and it should be set to 32 not 19 pixels and boom there you have it we just need to add some botting padding here to these buttons and we're good to go and that is how you create your whoops i need to ensure that the resizing text property is not set to fixed size set to auto height which will properly adjust as needed, as you can see there. And we've created our confirmation dialog with the long actions, meaning the, the buttons. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this properly and make that a main component. And we're gonna go ahead and tackle the more difficult component now, the confirmation dialog with the scrolling behavior. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit Option Command C on this component, create a new frame, Set that to 280 and the height to 428. Hit Option Command V. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy that header, paste that header into my new, soon to be confirmation dialog. And then paste this element in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy it. Whoops. Duplicate it, keep duplicating it as needed. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab this sticky call to action here. I'm gonna delete that naming convention right there at the end, copy that, paste it, option S to snap it to the bottom. And here we have some scrolly behavior. And then I'm gonna hit Shift A for auto layout. And then I'm gonna wrap auto layout around the dialog header and ensure that that's set to 20 on top, 24 on the side, zero on the bottom, 24. Actually 20 on the bottom as well. And then I'm gonna make sure that that auto layout frame fills the container horizontally when it resizes. And I can also adjust the padding to the right of the text box here. Set that to 24. And now all these elements can move around, which is great. Can move that all around with my arrow keys and whatnot. And um, that is how you create that dialog header there. And I'm gonna go ahead and challenge you to creating the mobile alert variant and the other two line dialogue header confirmation dialogue. And that is all I have to show you today, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one.